committee clerk. Doctor, would you mind settling an argument of ours? You are, after all, an outsider in this town, with a clear head and a fresh outlook. We've been arguing over the reasons for the sand plague outbreak. You would, of course, agree that it happened in this particular town for a reason, wouldn't you? Indeed, I don't believe in random chance. As a matter of fact, this town is nothing but a machine, produced to challenge the limits of human potential. And our ideas of how people connect to each other, our very relationship with nature. For more than a century, the three families ruling us have been running such experiments on the local population. You found yourself in a utopia. A utopia? You call this a fucking utopia? Utopias do not have plagues. I want to say this, I found myself in hell, but I feel like The Bachelor would say something about death. Death is a limit, unjustly imposed upon men. Humanity has long outgrown it. So what exactly were you arguing about? I think it's all because of the polyhedron, that gravity-defying tower the children play in. They say your children founded a republic inside. Why do you hate your own youth so much? History already knows an example of people trying to erect an impossible tower. It ended in tragedy. However, your edifice looks complete. Do you believe in God, Bachelor? No, I don't. There's only one thing I'm certain of. If this was an ordinary, common as Blackberry's town, there'd be no outbreak. Or it'd have been something equally common and ordinary, like cholera or pox. I feel like The Bachelor would break out some Latin. Post hoc, non propter hoc. Don't mix correlation and causation. I remember the meaning of post hoc ergo propter hoc, that's like after the fact, therefore because of the fact, so this is after the fact, uh, I'm not sure what non is, after the fact, not because of the fact, perhaps? Correlation and causation? You know, some pomp is bullshit. Damn, they look dead. <laughs> they look like a corpse. As for the relationship with nature, we are rebelling against it. No wonder it pushes back. The step people live as though they're in a primeval time reverse, like stone axes have yet to be invented. Worshipping bulls, talking to herbs. They don't even have a real language. It's all bull bull this and gur gur that. And yet for some reason, we allow them here. But they do have a language, and a rather beautiful one at that. What about the sacrifices? I'll have you know, they still make those. It's simply wrong to entangle different ages within the same space is all. Their age is different. Our time is broken. It's crippled, Bachelor. They've come from the past. So release them. Let them return to the earth they hold so dear. Let them leave. Oh, I read this wrong at first. I mean, I read it correctly, but I understood it wrong. I think. Um, it's simply wrong to entangle different ages within the same space is all. At first, I thought they were talking about, like, you know, kids and adults or something like that, which didn't make much sense to me. But, no, I, I think they're talking about different ages, like, quite literally, like, they talked about the step people as them living as if like stone axes hadn't even been invented yet or something like that. So I think they're talking about basically the modern age and then the ancient steppe people. It's wrong to entangle different ages within the same space. Their age is different. It is quite a clash. Is someone holding them here? Someone is. Our rulers. They have embedded the steppe people into this town carved them into its warm flesh. This isn't a town. 
It's an honest-to-God minotaur, a chimera. And chimeras have remarkably short lifespans and bad health. Can you breed a snake in a crane? You can, yes. But the progeny won't live long. Chimera. Interesting choice of words. Didn't we have talk of a chimera in the original game, playing as Burah? Didn't we need, like, the blood of a chimera? The blood of, like, a bull human? Have you ever seen a mule? <laughs> this is an impossible town, Bachelor. You just can't have your cake and eat it. Can't mix oil and water. Can't connect similarly charged magnet poles. Or rather you can, but only by force. And as soon as that force falters, it's all going to be shredded to pieces. We are abusing nature. If not for the rebellion against nature, we still wouldn't be able to use fire. I can still talk with you. We are at your service, Bachelor. Are they actually going to listen to what I say? Mm. So, it looks like I have two options that have to do with the shop. And then one totally separate option. So it's either open the shop or find a way to pacify the rebel rousers riding by the shop. No. Open the shop. It's been quarantined long enough. There's no danger in selling groats and grain. Your word is our command. Have you been keeping watch all night long? Let someone else take the next shift. Yeah, isn't this coffee dude? Dude that always sells coffee beans? And I can tell them to... We need to set up a spare hospital in any ordinary house. Arrange for beds and other necessary equipment to be delivered there. You know the drill. Should I do that? I don't see why not. Yeah. Really, doctor? You must be overworked. What for? The stone yard is clear. We should know. And in any case, it's not possible. All residential houses are overcrowded with healthy refugees from across the river. God damn you. How about the place that I'm staying at, then? It's otherwise vacant. Your word is our command. I can still talk with you? Stay vigilant. Yeah, not really. So I guess as we learn about what's happening around town, we can order things to be done about it to the committee. Whether that's actually going to do anything, no clue. As for me, Doctor, I'd say it's simple. Men must not be remodeled or altered, even if they request it themselves. Pitied, yes, but not altered. What's wrong with men, anyway? <laughs> What's wrong with men? <laughs> we have so little time on this earth that it's barely possible to scratch the surface of what we are, let alone explore humanity fully. Man is infinite. What's wrong with men? There's a lot that's wrong with men. To the contrary, man is far too finite. I don't know. I only feel that this is the root of the problem. It wasn't we who designed the world like this. I believe in men, Doctor. In superhumans, I do not. This earthly life wouldn't fit them. Immortals have no place in the world of the living. This is just how it works. Take from it what you will. Well, it's not as absurd a line of thinking as it seems at first glance. The earthly life wouldn't fit beings that live forever. It does feel like there's some truth to that. Okay, I think that's it. Yes. Okay, Georgi. What are you up to, you fucker? The judge has lost his mind, Bachelor. He denies the obvious, claims that the epidemic is still here. What? If what you're saying is true, why the bloody hell is the judge doing what he's doing? Why is he cancelling my orders? I know very little. 
The judge's is a brilliant mind. Master used to be extremely shrewd and conscientious. Help him, doctor. Perhaps pills or leeches are in order? A bloodletting, maybe? Quite so. I would very much enjoy offering the judge a good bloodletting now. The judge is seemingly the only person around who doesn't believe that the outbreak has been curbed. So yeah, why are they sabotaging my efforts to stop the plague? I dropped by your place at dawn, Bachelor. I wanted to warn you of my plans. Your young assistant asked me not to disturb you. I judged that it was better to let you have some rest. The catastrophe has already struck, and you needed all the strength you could muster to face the trials of today. What have you done, Georgi? I erected every possible defense so diligently, and it is all ruined now. Everything I worked to achieve. Quite so, for I am the judge, and, as is commonly agreed upon, I boast a certain level of intelligence. It's plain to me that you are on the verge of shredding me into pieces, but still your wrath. As a great Athenian once said, strike if you will, but here. I'm listening. You're a fanatic, Bachelor. A crusader. Your whole life is a duel with death. I know. I've read your articles. Followed your progress in the capital. For many years you've been trying to eliminate the very phenomenon of death. You continue this war of yours in this town too. But I implore you to look at this problem from a different angle. Such as? Plague is just a type of death to you, but to me, it's essentially an exam, and one must not run away from exams forever. Sooner or later, one must take them. An exam? Explain yourself. This is a rather unexpected interpretation of a catastrophe that took away half the population of your town. I have built this town, Bachelor. It's very unusual, you have to admit. This imponderable tower is its crowning achievement, and it was I who envisioned it like this. Surely you do not allow the thought that I do not care for it. This is my life's work. There's nothing in the world more dear to me. And yet you act as though you detest it. Towns are like people. Some are common and plain, content with their plainness. Others try to prevail over their nature, grow, reach for the sky. Are you playing God? No. An obstetrician. Or a hangman. Don't jump to conclusions. This isn't a punishment. This is an exam. Can't you tell the difference? An exam can be passed, and then one can move forward. And yet your town has obviously failed it. Let us not jump to conclusions. Don't you care for the casualties? According to my statistics, some 15,000 people have died. Your compatriots, your followers. My heart aches for them. This is dreadfully cruel, but perhaps the thing we're trying to build can only be erected with the help of those who have passed it, the exam of death, who has learned not to fight it, like you do, not to deny it, but rather understand it? No, embed it into themselves, use it. Humanity has learned to use the law of gravity, hasn't it? There's your proof. Just look out of the window. There was a time when humans could not brave the sky, but that time has passed. You are truly, utterly mad. Seems 
The judge claims that death is not the end, but rather a test waiting to be passed by every person. Let's go speak with the Odongs behind the cathedral. way down here? I think it's over here. But it kind of looks like there's one here. Oh, yeah. There's multiple. Herb Bride. You were the doctor. We've been expecting you. And I doubt that's because I'm a brilliant conversationalist. Let's not waste any time. Lead the way. No. First you will listen. My husband doesn't want you to treat him. He refuses to live. We need him to live until the evening. You will help. Clearly you're quite fond of your dear husband. Yes. All right, let's get to it. Where is he? Go to the yurt. You're the doctor. You will help. It's nice to have everything decided for you. An Odong is on the brink of death, but he can't be operated on, not without supplies. Yeah, where would I get supplies? Look, brethren. A snake man comes. Let us call him Moga. I'm quite content with my given name, thank you. <laughs> Just give a person a new name. Why not? No place for you here. A wedding. Not for you to watch. Alright. I'm turning my back and closing my eyes. <laughs> Being such a sarcastic jackass. We're not allowed to talk today. There's a celebration. The creature is breathing heavily. A deep and dirty wound is gaping across its belly. No one's bothered to dress it. To operate on him, one would require clean bandages and painkillers. And you'll have to move fast. Hmm. I can try to operate without the items required, using makeshift bandages and hoping for the best. Uh, no. Painkillers and bandages. I have neither. Hmm. Doesn't Sticky offer that stuff? I think so. How are my stats, by the way? I haven't paid any attention. Hunger's kind of high, but otherwise we're fine. That's something I should do sooner than later, because they might die very soon. <laughs> Out there is the herb bride with uh, the skull in front of their face. I love that. That's my favorite. One of my favorite things in the whole game. Okay. Um... I should do this right away. So let's like go to the shop, see if something's happened there on the way to here, or we can speak with Sticky, give him, give him some nuts. We don't have any nuts. I didn't bother to loot anything. 
because it seemed like looting didn't matter that much. But it matters at least a little bit. Maybe we'll find some nuts at the shop? Maybe. I guess I'll loot stuff on my way then. Yeah, I have nothing to trade them except the watch. I don't even know if they'd be interested in the watch. Sorry, I keep hearing weird noises over here, but I think it might just be my footsteps or something. I could also try to do the whole Vars place thing. That could definitely net me a lot of medical stuff. I should probably do that. But I'm, I'm so close, I might as well. Check out this. Oh. Like you just... They're just a seller now. Mm, I do have a little bit of money. Let's sell the pocket watch, absolutely. Oh, wait. They don't have any money. Uh, that's fine, though. It just means I need to just trade it at the same time as the thing I'm buying. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, I needed painkillers and bandages. They don't have painkillers, but they do have bandages. I guess I'll get one. Plus walnuts. Can't afford chestnuts. Yeah. Okay. So is there any point in going to Sticky, I guess? Maybe the walnut would be able to buy me a painkiller? Possibly. Yeah, I didn't give anything to Shrew. Hmm. Here we go. So that just gave him a nut. But they, did they did they actually give me anything? It seems like I have to give them a... I think I have to give them a nut just to open up them as a trader. Not to even get anything. Um. Oh, morphine. Ah, this... Two of these only equals six. And I need eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I just did a bunch of stuff. Boy named Sticky implores me not to give nuts to a girl named Shrew. Sticky would even buy nuts for me. Uh -huh. I traded nuts to Sticky. <laughs> I sure did. Okay, so I just need to find, like, a little something to trade. Those matches actually should be enough. Uh, I'll check this, too. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. I don't think it's an accident there's great tradables right around this area. Put my trust in Paul. Claw and whisker. Not you, Drifter. Yeah, if I traded everything, because I certainly have no reason to hoard this stuff. Oh, they don't want a broken scissor. Damn. What could I get? Morphine plus. Can't quite get another bandage. I feel like a needle would be good for, you know, doing surgery, but it didn't say I needed a needle. Whatever, let's get one anyway, just in case. Hmm. I think that's all I can get. I don't think anything costs two. Yeah. Okay, I think that'll be enough for the surgery. Let's go do that right now before they potentially die. Oh, and while I'm going by this person guarding the house, I might as well tell them to hand me over the lockpicks. 
Oh, I also was having this conversation with the Herbbrite outside of Avion's place. Remember, Avion is dead, but their voice is like echoing throughout the building. I just assumed it would lead nowhere like it did last time I talked to them, but now it's actually leading somewhere different. Um, why did you come here? Your camp is in the steppe, behind the cathedral. It's too sorrowful there. One of us is getting married. No time for joy. Isn't marriage a happy occasion? Not according to our traditions. I'd be curious to see your funeral then. Okay, please tell me we can do the surgery now. Properly. And they're not dead. They're not dead. Yes, you have everything you need. Proceed with the operation. Not you. Who did this to you? The wound looks suspiciously self-inflicted. Not know the lines. Not know how to cut open. Go away. Outsider. The one who did this for you definitely knew, though. An impressive wound. Was it one of your lot? Family business. Leave. Like hell I will. You dragged me here, so I'll see it through to the end. Leave. Let die. If I die, then no wedding. Few of us left. Wedding? Not yours, obviously, so why should you worry? No, not mine. All done. No drinking until the evening. No touching stitches. No gratitude expected, either. They want to die so that the wedding won't happen? What happens in weddings? Amongst the step people, my god. The Hippocratic Oath was observed, but it wasn't plague. Enemy. Spoiled everything. I'm touched. A patient's gratitude is the most rewarding thing a doctor can hear. <laughs> oh. Oh. The fuck? Is this what happens during a wedding? You cut out an herb bride's heart? The wedding went well. This is for you. No declining. Is that her heart? That girl's? The one who danced? No declining. She chose herself. She was betrothed to the earth. The wedding went well. A lovely wedding. Ew, squishy sound. Everything will be good now. We are grateful to you. Never seen better. We fear neither pain nor death. One is immortal while the kin lives. You wouldn't understand. If only it was so simple. But I doubt that millions of dying people would agree with you. I had a heart. I had a heart at the beginning of the loop on me. Any connection? A warm heart that went out to people. Literally. You're still back here. Can I talk with you now? Mm -mm. Okay. Where to now? Still don't want to do these. I don't have anything I need to buy at the shop, so... I guess now it's... Go to where the orderlies are having a celebration? Hmm. 
I do want to see if Maria is in the crucible, because it says that no one's seen them for two days. Ah, oh, we can't go inside. Not even through the other side. I don't think this door's ever worked. Yeah, it just looks like it's boarded up. No, it's not even really a door. Well, I think I'm actually going to save the game at Georgie's place. Sorry that I stopped calling him good old Georgie. Uh, I think I'm going to end the episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go check out the awesome party that the orderlies are having. <laughs>